Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Global Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to continue testing the space shuttle with the Orion carrier plane boosters taking the place of the solid rocket boosters that the shuttle normally had. And of course I have made some changes to make things a little bit better. We have added methane burning turbofan engines to the Orion carrier planes so that they can actually be recovered. So they'll be able to cover some distance after they hit the atmosphere again and perhaps make a landing. And I have also adjusted the tilt of the shuttle's main engines just a tad so that we can compensate for the fact that the shuttle with the heavy payload in space it is currently carrying 90 tons compared to its normal 25 tons of cargo at most. And so that's a lot for it to carry and we have to tilt the little engines so that they actually point through the resulting center, center of mass of the shuttle and external tank when the external tank has depleted its fuel. But also before that, they have to sort of make sure that their gimbal range can point through it as the, sh uh, the shuttle external tank center of mass moves. So it's all very complicated. Uh, the fact that we have added uh, jet engines to the Orion carrier plane helps with the balance actually because the Orion carrier planes deplete of fuel and oxidizer and when they do that they their thrust tends to be overpowered compared to their position in the stack uh, but since we've added the jet engines that adds more mass to that side so that the rocket engines don't have to be shut down unnecessarily so and again uh, the Orion carrier planes each have nine Raptor 2 engines that is how they are configured so they are using real engines as it were and uh, this idea uh, using a pair of boosters like this was not a common idea during the shell proposals uh, normally during the proposal phase they were thinking of a single large carrier plane with the shuttle on top until the shuttle got its cargo bay that was while the shuttle still had uh, the fuel inside of it instead of having this huge cargo bay once it got the cargo bay they realized that they needed to put the external tank on instead of having the fuel inside the shuttle. And having this large external tank meant that you couldn't have the carrier plane version of the shuttle stack anymore. Uh, having flyback boosters was a possibility that they thought of, but nothing so extravagant like this. This is much larger. The boosters are much larger than what they thought of. Uh, flyback boosters, I'm sure they thought of it and also the Russians thought of it, uh, the Soviets I should say, thought of it for the Buran Energia stack. So these are ideas that have existed. I mean, this is nothing new. So we are just trying to implement it in a novel way. And we are going to be launching this time from Boca Chica because I have previously taken the Orion carrier planes from Boca Chica to Cape Canaveral and we're going to try and cover that distance this time as well. I thought about launching from Cape Canaveral and trying to make a uh, put a runway at the location of Bermuda, uh, but it turns out that the distance between Cape Canaveral and Bermuda is not very different from the distance between Boca Chica and Cape Canaveral. Uh, from Cape Canaveral to Bermuda, it's about 975 miles, and from Boca Chica to Cape Canaveral, it's about 1,025, so it's only a 50 mile difference. So it turned out that that wouldn't help much anyway, unless we are really wedded to the idea of launching out of Cape Canaveral. So yeah, as far as recovering the Orion carrier planes are concerned, they'll, it's basically the same idea. Though, again, uh, one thing we could do is like we could land the Orion carrier plane at Cape Canaveral and then immediately refit it and launch uh, for a new launch out of Cape Canaveral and then land it at Bermuda after that. Anyway, big big ideas, but let's just test this out for now. Let's bring, bring it out to the pad at Boca Chica. Now I don't have my Boca Chica scenery that I've used in the To Mars and Beyond series in here, and part of the reason for that is we have the shuttle here, and there is a limited amount of RAM space for all these things, so I just skipped out on that scenery, so we just have the stock, not stock, but real solar system scenery for the Boca Chica area. Okay, so as you might expect, I've also made changes to the launch script, and we'll see first whether the shuttle can get its 90-ton payload to orbit, and then we'll worry about the Orion carrier plane retrieval. So up it goes. 
Okay, we are past the speed of sound, and we have throttled down a bit. Per the shuttle's normal sort of thing. Okay, we are at 40 kilometers. You can see our current speed and our distance from Boca Chica there. And it is about to turn off some of the engines on the booster planes. There we go. And I've extended the time that the booster planes hang out. So they're going to use up more of their fuel trying to help boost the shuttle in this case. And the question then is whether they're going to have enough fuel after that to get to Cape Canaveral, right? But first we'll check out that the shuttle gets to orbit with its payload. Normally to get to Cape Canaveral from Boca Chica, the Orion carrier planes look to be going at about 4,000 meters per second, but it's also important that they get tossed up high enough. And they're not going to be nearly that high. Normally they'd be at 200 kilometers. Uh, here they're not even going to make 100 kilometers, so that's a little bit of a difficulty. Okay. And they're off at 3,300 or so. But they don't have that much methane and oxygen left here. So there is that consideration. Okay, anyway, continuing with the shuttle. If you add up the stage delta V with our orbital velocity, it looks like we have enough, but we have to make certain, considering we're still at a fairly low altitude and everything. Normally at this point the shuttle's pitch would be neutral, but because I've tilted the engines a little bit differently to help with the balance, uh, that's why it's using some of its pitch here. Okay, the shuttle is rolling over. Okay, we are getting close to orbit, and we are in much better shape. Let's see how it uh, ends up here. We are basically over Florida now. A convincing trajectory over Cape Canaveral and everything. Okay, and shut down. So 327 by 19 kilometers there. Oh, I thought I had added the separation maneuver. I <laughs> uh, okay. Well, anyway, there's an RCS separation maneuver I added to one version of the script, but apparently I didn't sneak it into this one yet. So now it's going to do the OMS burn to get into a proper orbit, having left the external tank in the atmosphere. Well, in a trajectory that will return into the atmosphere. Okay, we are on the OMS burn. Okay, and it'll shut down at 160 kilometers. Alright, we'll keep prograde. I'll try and get it up to a more circular position at 332 and then we'll release the cargo and make sure that we have the 200 meters per second that would more than enough cover uh, re-entry. Okay, I haven't bothered to keep it circular, I just left it on prograde there. Uh, but we are above 300 kilometers on both sides, at 330 on average. Uh, we could have gotten it to 330 just fine. So let's just release the cargo. I think it was a little bit clipped into the bottom though, so... Yep, a little bit of violence there. But as we can see, the shuttle itself, after releasing the 9 ton cargo, has 270 meters per second, which is more than enough. In fact, we could get it to a higher orbit if necessary, like 360 circular or even higher. So, yeah, 90 tons, as we have it, is doable, but the question is whether the Orion carrier planes can actually make it back to Cape Canaveral like that. Now that they have jet engines, at least they won't be forced to try and land simultaneously on the one runway or something. Uh, the jet engines will allow them to... Uh, delay their arrival somewhat, if necessary. Uh, but yeah, let's follow one and see where it goes. Okay, here we go. And off it goes.
Okay, we are past the speed of sound once again. No real drama in this phase of flight. Okay, getting ready. There we go. All right. So now, RCS on, kill rotation. Uh, make sure it's controlling from here. Control from here. Okay. Well, let's see how we can manage this. We're still pretty low. 84 kilometers, though the apoapsis is uh, 97 or so. Anyway, we are righting ourselves and the shuttle is out of control distance. So yeah, or obviously we don't have the normal speed that we use to get to Cape Canaveral. So the question is whether we can sort of get it gliding over there. Okay, we are getting some heat here. Seems well controlled. Of course, they're not going as fast or coming in from as great a height. So I think we're peaking out at about 6 Gs here. The other plane has been destroyed because it does still have to get go in in the right orientation. You can't can't mess with that. We're still way too high and fast to attempt to light the jet engines or anything like that. We are currently here, so we've crossed more than half the Gulf of Mexico. We're going back down now, but it's very well controlled. We aren't using much pitch here right now. We just sort of skip gliding here. We bounced up a tiny little bit. Now we're going back down again, but all the while losing speed, of course. And as we lose speed, we're not going to cover that distance very well. We are now below Mach 3, which makes things safer for me as far as controlling it. Our pitch is getting a little bit maxed out, so I'll just sort of pitch down somewhat. Oh, now it's maxed out the pitch. Yeah, we are... Now, in the thicker part of the atmosphere, we can't hold the same angle of attack like that. Get the engines ready. It doesn't seem like they're uh, complaining or anything. Okay, I'm gonna switch to atmospheric autopilot. And I'll turn RCS off. And now we will dump the oxygen. It says we have a lot of stage time there with the fuel that we have. We're still just here. <laughs> so it's still a ways. And we're still losing speed here. Uh, these two engines cannot keep it above Mach 1, so. It's basically going to go down to airliner speeds and airliner altitudes. At least we're starting out fast. It's a struggle to get it off of the runway and get it up to these kinds of heights. So I guess I'll have far up just uh, to have the Mach number reference. Well, I say airliner-like, but we're not ending up anywhere near like that. We're probably going to level out at like 9 kilometers altitude and Mach 0.75 or something like that. And that's with the engines going a full blast, but I don't want to carry extra engine mass. Of course, if we couple, carry double the engines, then we'd be better off. But do I want to? Not really. Probably not. I mean, it's a trade-off, though. It's a question of whether carrying the extra engine mass would save us some fuel mass. And we would do that by getting up to higher altitude and then throttling down while maintaining a slightly higher speed. So then we would consume less fuel like that. It's possible. I said 9 kilometers, but you're going lower than that. I'll pull up a little bit here. 
We're still decelerating. Well, I don't need that water. That's not going to be much in that oxygen. This is supposed to be automated. Well, there's the coast of Florida, though, at least, and Tampa Bay over there. So we're getting somewhere here. Well, we've got clouds here at five kilometers. And I should turn a little bit more to the north here. Let me take us out of fizz warp for that. Only 11 more minutes of stage time here. Okay, we can see Cape Canaveral up ahead there. We're in pretty good shape. I think we can just uh, keep it on idle right now. Okay, air brakes. Landing gear. Okay, turning towards the runway. All right, all lined up here. Okay, touchdown. Okay, I don't think we need to use the drag chutes. We do, do have those available, but not necessary this time. Uh, uh, the engines are actually still consuming methane, by the way. As long as they're on, there's some thrust and consumption, but they don't make the sound for some reason. But anyway, there we have it. The Orion airplane was successful in returning to Cape Canaveral. It has seven minutes, almost seven minutes of fuel left. So the other a booster could just wait around a little bit longer and then come in for a landing afterwards. Uh, hopefully they can get this off the runway in that kind of time, but it's a little bit difficult. I mean, it'd be nice to have two runways, obviously. But yes, so the system works. 90 tons to orbit. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, just, just, just a curiosity. So with that... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.